Well, this morning we're going to take, a, take time to look at a, a passage of Scripture that I think should help most of us here today, if not all of us. I know that for, in my life, in, when I looked at this passage and I took it from the perspective of, of, how, of what it, it has to teach us, there's a lot that I was able to learn from it that, um, you know, that I think would uh, really, really help uh, most of us in, in, in a lot of situations that we face in our lives. How many of you ever feel like you have obstacles? You know, if you think about it, is there any obstacle in your life? Have you ever come up against something that seems insurmountable? Something that seems impossible to get around? Something that seems impossible to overcome? I know for in my life, in, uh, in, in, many, in, the, in the short time I've been alive, 45 years, almost, or almost 46 years, right? Yeah, okay, I almost can't remember how old I was. But uh, in, in the, all that time, in this, in this time of my life, there's been so many times I've come up against something that I go, I just don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can get through this. I don't know if I can get around this. I don't, I don't know if I can face it. And I remember it was probably 10 years ago, I had one of those times in my life. I had one of those times that I was going through life and things were seeming to go really great. We were at a church and, and everything was going wonderful. Uh, all of a sudden, things just started to fall apart for us, and I went from being this guy that was very excited, very happy, to this person that, that was just beat up and, and, and knocked out. And I got to, we got to Edmonton, we went to uh, Grace Family Church at that time, it was First Baptist Church in St. Albert, and we, we got to that place, and, I, and it was one of those moments in your life that you just have to do a check and see what's going on around you. And I got so had gotten such a, such a struggle that I went into a deep depression. And I was so, uh, so overwhelmed by life, by circumstances, by everything that was going on around me, and I just felt like I couldn't, couldn't go forward anymore. But it was at that time that I learned that I had to really trust God. And it was during that time that I learned so much about, about, uh, about life in my life. It was a time that I called that, that it was seven years of wandering, seven years in the desert. I haven't shared that with many of you, or I don't know if any of you, but it was a very difficult time in my life. Often we're, we're faced with the impossible. Tasks that seem so big that it's too much for us to handle. In our church life, we often use words like that we're, we're just too small a church, or we're not ready, or we're not able. But as a church or as a believer in Jesus Christ, we need to understand that it's not what we can do, it's but what God can do through us and in us. I know that it's not easy to say, it's, it's, rather it's an easy thing to say, but it's not an easy thing to do, is it? How do we let God work through us? How do we let God help move us from where we are or against when we come up against such difficult things that we don't think we can do it? Maybe it's a school, it's school, maybe it's a job, maybe it's a relationship, whatever it might be, but how do we get through that? Well, in Joshua chapter 6, we learn some things that I think should really help us this morning. Joshua was presented, and the people were presented with an impossible task of getting and going into the promised land and taking the land for themselves. And the first thing that we see happening in there and with them is that they come up against uh, some the, the giants, of pe the giant people, the, the huge, the huge task of taking these big fortified cities and taking on these pe these huge people that they said. Remember back in in, uh, in the past scripture we looked at last week, where we see how they even saw them as as huge people that they would think look at them as like like grasshoppers and they would just be crushed. So this is what the task that they've been given. This is the obstacle that they've been they've been presented with. But Joshua, being a man of faith, was ready for this God-sized task. A task that only could happen with God was, if God was on their side. So we come to the passage of Joshua chapter 6, and we know, learn of a story that probably many of you have heard of, even if you haven't spent a lot of time in church or a lot of time in Sunday school, but it's, it's well, Joshua and the people come up against the city of Jericho. And they fight a great battle there. It's an interesting battle. It's an interesting story because it's not a typical battle. It's not a typical way of handling things. 
In, in chapter 5, Joshua comes up and he meets up with this man, uh, this angel of God, who some would say might be uh, an early manifestation, early early appearance of Christ. And he is he's the commander. He says, I'm the commander of the Lord's army, and you, you need to follow after what, I'm, what, what we're going to tell you to do. Now, if you're not familiar completely with the story, Joshua and the people come up to this city, and it's a great city. It says it's mighty, a mighty city. And, they, and they're to take this city. God says, I'm going to hand them over to you. And I'm going to hand them over to you in a special way. I'm going to hand them over to you by you marching around the city. You're not going to throw rocks at them. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to run up against the walls of the, of the city. You're not going to try to burn the city down or any of those kind of things. I just want you to do one, one simple thing. I want you to take the priests. And set them out in front and give them seven ram's horns. And then behind the priests, I want you to set the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. And the, and the Levites are to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And then behind the Ark of the Covenant are to be the people of God, the Israelites. Now what I want you to do is I want for seven days, I want you to march around the city. And all that I want to happen is I want the priests with the seven ram's horns to blow the horn. And as they're blowing the horn, I just want the people to follow them behind the ark, and I want them to be silent. And then, on the seventh day, I'm gonna, they're going to blow the horn, and one, there's one long horn, blow, that, one, one long, I guess, trumpet horn, or blowing of the horn. I want you to all yell together, and at that point, I'm going to give you the city. Now, that seems like just quite an amazing way to take a city, but they, and, that, and that's what they do. Seven days they wander around the city. Every day they get up in the morning, they wander around the city. And can you see it? If you were in the city, you're watching these people, there's the, the, truck, the priests are out front blowing the horns, and, uh, and they're just wandering around. They're not talking. They're not talking to you. They're not yelling at you. They're not confronting you. They're not doing anything. They're being silent, and they're walking and marching around the city. And then on the seventh day, as they begin to march around the city, Joshua said, tells the people, when I tell you to shout, you're going to shout. And as they do that, they shout out loud, and, and, or they march around, and, and the trumpet blows, and Joshua says, now, and they shout loud, loud and the walls crumble, and the people of God go into the city of Jericho and take the city. Not leaving a single thing alive. It's an amazing story of how God can work and how we can learn that even in the biggest obstacles, we can make it through. There's three things I want us to pay, pay, pay close attention to in this. And that first thing is that in verses 1 through 5, we find that we overcome obstacles through communication. The best thing to do when you come up and come into a battle, when you come into a, a difficulty, when you come up against an insurmountable wall, <coughs> difficulty, hardship in your life, is to communicate. Communicate with God. Verse 1 through 5 in, in, in chapter 6, we read this. Now Jericho was, was strongly fortified because of the Israelites, no one, no one leaving it or entering. The Lord said to Joshua, Look, I have handed over hand of Jericho, its king, and its fighting men over to you. March then around the city all, with all the men of war. Circle the city one time. Do this six day, for, for six days. Have seven priests carry seven rams, horns, trumpets, um, in front of the ark. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. While the priests blow the trumpets, and when the when, and when there is a prolonged blast of the horn, and you hear it sound, have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the city walls will collapse, and the people will advance, each man straight ahead. When you come up against a difficulty, what is the first thing we typically do? Well, for me, I don't know about you. Often, when I get, get in a struggle, I often just close in and shut down. 
I think, oh, I can't do this. I can't, I, I can't make it. I'm, I'm too, it's too impossible a task for me. It's too hard for me. It's too difficult for me. And I just close it. And I shut the door. I shut myself off, not only from, my, from those around me, but from God. Joshua understood very clearly because of his faith that when he came up against this difficult task, when he came up against this hard thing, this thing that he, he thought he could not do, it was time to talk to God and to communicate with God. When, the, when you come up against a difficulty, when you come up against an obstacle, when you come up against a hardship, a difficulty in your life, the best thing that you can do is take time to spend time with God. Talk to God. Talk to God with, with family, with friends, and with your church. Talk to God by yourself. Spending time with Him, trying to get an answer from Him, trying to get a better understanding of what you need to do in your life. See, Joshua understand, understood it was time to hear from God and to listen to what He wanted them to do. To overcome obstacles, we must hear from God. So often when we get into trouble, we seem to come, that we come up against an impossible task, we don't take time to talk to God about it. We start to chatter and stop listening. You know, we start to get nervous, we start to get uptight, and we just get more, more worked up, and we, and we, and we, stop, to, we stop listening to what, what we know can, can give us the answer. We start to turn to our understanding, to our wisdom, to our ways of looking at things. But as Joshua teaches us here, it is time to talk to God. But not only do we need to learn to talk, to, go, to communicate, in order to do this, we need to we, we defeat difficulties through compliance. In verses 6 through 12, Joshua tells the people what they need to do, and the people listen to Joshua. And they follow along, and they, and they do that one day, that march around the city once every for six days. And then they finally go and they follow him into the, to, on the seventh day. You know, verse 10 says, Joshua commanded the people, don't shout or, or, or let your voice be heard. Don't let a word, one word out of, come out of your, your mouth until the time I say shout. Then you are to shout. So the Ark of the Covenant says in verse 11, uh, of the Lord was carried around the city, circling it once. They returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priest took the Ark of the Lord. And, and when they... God gave a direction to be, to, to be successful, they were able to, to conquer. They were able to take the city. So they marched around this, this, this city once, once around, there three times for six days. They listened to the command of God. They, they follow what they're, they're obedient. How often is it that when we, when we know what is right to do, we often do the opposite? How, how often is it that, that when we, we spend time with God, we spend time in His Word, we know what, what, what His Word says, we know what he, what he commands us to do, yet, what do we do? We do the opposite. We begin to listen to others. We begin to listen to, to, to other wisdoms, other philosophy, other ways of looking at things. What God wants us to do is to hear from Him and then follow Him. Compliance. We are an interesting people, aren't we? Because we live in a generation that where, where people are often told, just do it, like in the Nike commercial. Do it your way. There's no way, you know, if you're, there's no right way, there's no wrong way, there's no black, there's no white, there's no, no truth, there's, there's, there's just ideas. And as Christians, what we need to come to understand is that God has a direction for us. God has something for us to do. God has, has a plan for us. And in His Word, He, he, he describes that uh, in a consistent way. And we need to stay focused and listen to what He has to call us to do. In Galatians chapter 1, or chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, we read this. It says, Then after 14 years, Paul says, I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus with along, along also. I went up according to the a revelation and presented to them the gospel, I preached among the Gentiles, but privately 
to those who recognize to those recognized as leaders. So that I may not be running or having run the race in vain. Hear what Paul said. God showed me a direction. God had a plan for me. God said, this is what I would have you do. And, and Paul had to listen. He paid attention. He did as God called him to do. So that, why? So that he wouldn't be doing anything on his own without, without any purpose. So he wouldn't be running in vain. So he wouldn't be just going in some, just, some odd direction. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, this is what Paul says. says, do you know that runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way to win the prize. Now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do, they do it to receive a crown that will fade away. But if we, a crown that will never fade away. Therefore I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or, or, or walks like one beaten beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I might, I, I myself will not be disqualified. Hear what Paul is saying. I'm running with a purpose. I'm following after what God has called me to do. I'm doing as I, as, as we need to, as I need to be doing so that I don't run the race without purpose. He stays focused. God has called Paul to a purpose, a, a preaching to the Gentiles. And he's, he keeps that focus in, in, his, in, in mind all the time. It's a huge, huge obstacle to think about it. The Jews and Gentiles didn't, didn't mix really well. But Paul, this Jewish leader, this Jewish man who was educated as a, as a, a, a Jew, has a task given to him of reaching the Gentiles. An impossible task. Yet, he stays focused. He keep, gets in his lane, he, he, he focuses down, down the track, he runs so that he, he can run to the end and finish well. You and I, we need to get in our lane and we need to stay, in, stay focused on what God has called us to do. We can't always be running off, we can't get in, into all these other areas, we need to get, stay where He's called us. Stay in our lane. If you really want to get past all that holds you back, you must hear the word of the Lord and you must act on it. Act on it in such a way that you will not falter. Many people go, or many people got, got, got the, hear, the have the hearing now, but fail to comply with what God directs them to do. Our church, we, on a Sunday, typical Sunday, we have 300 people in this building. So we have it down. We, we're here to hear the Word of God. But how many of us fail when we leave this building to follow what God has called us to do? To hear His Word, to answer, and to comply. We need to listen to what God has to tell us.
21, we see what happens when they, when they do what God has called them to do. The impossible becomes possible. The impossible becomes possible through the providence in God. When we read on in this passage of Scripture, if we go through this section, this, this section, we see that they are able to do exactly as God called them to do. They are able to follow after Him. And then when they, on the seventh day, when they, on the, after they marched around the city, the city seven times, and the trumpet was blown, and they all called out together, they were able to march in take the city without any, any problems. When we follow after God, and we follow all that God has instructed us to do in our lives, we can do what God has called us to do in a mighty way. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, it says, In Him we have boldness and confidence, access through faith in Him. So then, I ask you, not to be discouraged over my affliction on, my, on, on your behalf, for they are for your glory. And he goes on in verse 14, says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. I pray that he may grant you according to, to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his spirit. And that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love. And to know the Messiah, the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory of the church of Christ Jesus, to all generations. Paul understood that no matter what he faced, no matter what hardship he faced, by him keeping his focus on God and following after God, he was able to accomplish whatever God called him to accomplish. And by the time he's writing here, he's asking the people to, uh, the, in Ephesus and those around the other churches to, to, to don't be distracted by what he's experienced. Paul's in prison. Paul has been, been, been locked up and, and been chained to another man now. He says, don't worry about what I'm doing. Keep your focus on God. Follow after Him. And you'll be able to do mighty things. Because our God is able to do more than we ask of Him. Our God is able to do more than our, our imaginations and every Our God is able all things. If we trust Him. If we follow Him. If we obey Him. There's an old song called Trust and Obey. And it says, Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust everyone. If you want to be happy, if you want to be content, if you want to be filled with peace, if you want to be able to face the challenges of your day, if you want to be able to, to overcome the obstacles that seem to be just thrown up in front of you all the time, go to God. Trust His Word. 